So, yeah, this is one of those updates you can't just scroll past, right? If you're building apps solo, especially if you're anywhere near the App Store this year, you've probably seen it by now. Apple's rolling out more ad slots and search results for 2026, not just the top spot anymore. We're talking multiple ads showing up as people scroll scattered deeper in the results. I've got the Apple Docs up on screen if you want the full corporate speak, but let's just uh, keep it real here because honestly, this changes a lot for solo devs. Just real quick, I'm Daniel. I've been living in the iOS trenches for over eight years, started out freelancing, working with clients, bouncing between all sorts of projects. But after Dub Dub 25, I went all in on solo dev life. Since then, I've crafted over 10 of my own apps, building a solo app studio, started building everything in public. And honestly, right now, pretty much all my energy goes into making this solo studio into something that lasts not just another round of quick MVPs or AI slop, the kind of apps that actually scale up. And yeah, I'm sharing every bit of that on Crafters Lab. It isn't just another tutorial site or some AI clone farm. This is my actual home base. It's for solo devs who want to use AI like a real teammate, uh, not like a vending machine. Uh, if you're serious about leveling up, building with care and making apps that actually last, you'll feel right at home. And yeah, if you're still on Patreon, massive thanks. But heads up, everything's have moved over to crafterslab.dev. That's where it's all happening now. So come be part of the crew. Would love to have you building with us. All right, so here's the news. Starting now, there's not just one ad at the top of App Store search anymore. Apple's adding new ad slots. Could be fourth, fifth, seventh, 13th. We really don't know how deep it'll go yet. And honestly, I don't think even the folks writing these docs wanna spell it out. The pitch is more ads equals more opportunity, but the reality if you're indie, is that your organic spot can get shoved further and further down with every scroll. Back in the day, you shipped an app, hustled for a little keyword magic, maybe ran one ad campaign just to see if it would bump your downloads. Now, feels like every search result um, could turn into an ad parade. It's not just about getting the top spot anymore. It's about hoping you're not the fifth organic result squeezed between four sponsored banners. And honestly, as solo devs, this is kind of the new normal. It's not about being scared of change. It's just about being real. When the slots go up, the value of that hard-earned organic ranking goes down. If you were fifth for habit tracker, cool. But now you're eighth after three new ad slots. And you just know the big studios with those monster budgets are ready to carpet bomb every keyword that moves. Here's where it gets a little personal and a little philosophical. Because, yeah, on paper, more ad slots sounds like more chances, more reach. But as a solo dev, using AI agents to ship fast, sometimes spinning up a whole MVP in a weekend, it's almost too easy to fall into the trap. Hey, let's just launch an ad campaign for every new app and see what sticks. But here's the real talk. That's the road to burnout and wasted budgets. I mean, it's like all those Instagram growth hackers posting 10 times a day, boosting every single thing, praying something will go viral. You ever see how most of those posts flop? That's how I see these new ad slots. Apple just gave everyone more ways to light their money on fire. The real shift for us solo devs, more ads don't mean more installs for everyone. It means more noise. You're not just fighting for a spot, you're fighting for the, the user's attention as they scroll through a gauntlet of paid placements. You can ship a dozen MVPs, run an ad for each and still disappear into the static because now the metric isn't just who paid the most, it's who actually stops the scroll. And honestly, with AI tools like Claude Code or Cursor, spinning up a new project is no big deal. Launching is easy. The real grind is getting traction. And ads alone? That's not the magic answer. Feels almost backwards now. Like, the more the system lets you spray ads everywhere, the less any one ad actually matters. So. Here's where I landed. The trick now isn't to out add the big guys because let's be real, we're not gonna win that game. The only thing that cuts through in this new ad heavy world is traction, not paid, but real organic bottom up traction. The way I think about it, 
It's like those Instagram marketers who post 20 things and only boost the one that goes organic. I run my little app studio the same way, build 10 projects with AI agents, launch them quick, sure. But I only even think about running ads for the ones that start to move on their own. If an app picks up some momentum, users talking about it, downloads coming in without the ad spend, maybe a little word of mouth, that's when I'll test an ad, never before. Because today when the app store's packed with ads, the only thing that breaks through is what already has a pulse. Paid campaigns don't give your app a soul, they just add a megaphone. If nobody's listening, the volume doesn't help. So my advice, ship fast, sure. Use every tool, Claude code, cursor, whatever, but don't let the ad slot explosion trick you into thinking your launch needs to come with a budget. Watch for the organic spark. Let the real users find you. If something pops, then you fuel the fire. And yeah, you gotta stay nimble. Keep your process tight. Your feedback loops faster than the big studios can even book a meeting. Be willing to kill your darlings. If a project doesn't move, move on. Your energy is worth more than another ad experiment for an app that hasn't proven it wants to live. So yeah, if you're still here at the end, honestly, you're a legend, no joke. I know for solo devs, it's tempting to chase every new growth opportunity Apple rolls out, but in 2026, the smartest move is still building for the people who care, not just for the algorithm. It's more chaotic, sure, but honestly, it's never been a better time to build deliberately. You don't need to buy your way into relevance. You just need to build apps that deserve to exist. And yeah, check out crafterslab.dev. It's not just some tutorial dump. It's not another AI clone farm. It's honestly my home base. I built it for solo devs who treat AI like a real teammate, not just a button you smash when you're stuck and, you know, it's packed. You get full walkthroughs, like actual short video tutorials, a tone of Claude code skills in the pipe, and yeah, resources means straight up downloadable zips you can drop right into your project. The real magic is in the crew. Members get to actually riff in the comments, ask follow-ups, go back and forth, and yeah, that's just the start because the real core is the, the Notion Team Spaces, my live playbook. Members get a front row seat to my command center. Every app I'm building, all the .md files I'm actually using on real projects. Uh, the full prompt library, the docs I'm writing as I go, and all the automations I'm wiring up behind the scenes. There's a full curated Swift and Swift UI library team space too. Not just some pile of old uh, auto-generated files, but real up-to-date stuff. It's packed with the kind of deep dive keynotes and private talks I normally paid some 100 bucks for, honestly. You won't find any of this in the public training data. This is all the modern, real-world code I use myself uh, to fine-tune models and build out my own custom MCPs for Claude Code, for Cursor, all of it. There's a bunch of different ways to use it, and I'm always experimenting, always posting about it in the lab. And then there's Ops Lab. It's where I build and share all my Notion AI agent instructions, Notion templates, the workflows, automations, all wired up and ready for you to copy, tweak, totally break and make your own. The whole point is to keep the indie stack connected so you don't feel like you're building in a silo, even if you're solo at the keyboard. So yeah, if you want to get in before it gets busy and prices start moving, now is kind of the sweet spot. The crew is still small, super hands-on, and honestly, it feels way more like a behind the scenes dev lounge than some giant faceless forum. Would love to see you in there, uh, swap some stories, maybe even learn something from what you're building next. All right, that's it for me. Keep crafting, keep shipping. Peace.